That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Notre Dame Downs Georgia Tech 31 to 13. It's a good day to be a Notre Dame fan edition of the Always Iris Show. All right, let's get into this. Just got off the, the call-in show, got a lot of interesting opinions of where kind of the Notre Dame fan base is at after this victory. Um, and, and it ranges from reasoned optimism that Notre Dame could run the table and end up 11-1 and, and see what happens to this team still just not as good as I want it to be and this this isn't good enough. Those are kind of like kind of the, the main couple competing vibes on the, the post-game show, some of the chat. So let's get into the realities of this and kind of see where we're going to fall on this uh, as we get ready to head into this very important Navy week. So obviously, thanks for being here. You can find a program on YouTube. Hit subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps too. Notifications on that way you don't miss anything. Twitter, search bar, always Irish rat. Always Irish. Emails, always Irish. ND at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You can get it. If you don't want to see John's face, ain't nobody going to blame you for that. I don't even want to see it. And I got to look at it all day into this, looking into this camera. Call in lines. They're popping, baby. 312 988 You dial it up. Tell Uncle Johnny all oh, you've heard and seen. Notre Dame Fighting Irish, brought to you by Sports Illustrated. Read all about it. When I get done with this, I'm going to write four or five articles. Oh, the ideas come into John's head. Read all about it. Thanks to everybody that already does. Let's not forget about patreon.com slash always Irish. It's the former captain. He the leading tackler. It's Mike Goolsby. We break it all down behind the paywall. Thanks for being there. We let it rip by now, wall. That's the point. Thanks to everybody that supports us over there. Okay. Here's where I'm at with this. And it has not wavered. It's my initial thought after the game ended and I started the call-in show and it's going to be my thought now. Notre Dame is a flawed football team. Most are, but even by Notre Dame standards, it's a flawed football team. It isn't where I want it to be in all areas. And it is an extremely injured and beat up football team. So with those things in mind, this was a great performance. It was a great performance. Tricky spot on the road. A team that was tough to gauge. Yes, you got lucky because I think their best defender was out, that linebacker. And then the the really good dual threat quarterback was out too. So Notre Dame caught a couple breaks there. And it's like, I, gee, I don't feel bad about it. Notre Dame's been catching breaks all year in all of our players' body parts. So it's good to see, you know, you caught a break there on the plus side. Instead of it all being against Notre Dame with the injuries, they had a couple and it balanced things out for you. Good job, Notre Dame. Good job. All, listen, man, nothing we could do is going to undo what happened week two. There is nothing any of us could say or do that is going to erase that bad performance and what it did to you, pinning you, putting you behind the eight ball the rest of the year. I've been saying it the whole year. Notre Dame could always lose. They could always afford to lose one game and be fine, but it couldn't be week two and it couldn't be to Norday. You could afford to lose a game somewhere, but it couldn't be this one. And it was, and it was week two at home against Northern and all, and, and all, it just couldn't be that one. And so from that moment, your back was against the wall. The entire season was on the brink, caved early or whatever. This team just keeps fighting and they keep finding ways to win. And that's all I can ask them to do the way they're, they're constituated right now, the way they're built. That's all I can ask them to do is fight and claw and cross off the games in the weeks and the calendar with victories. That's all I can ask them to do because I just don't think it's going to get pretty. And I don't think this team's just never going to look like we had hoped it might look on the high end. They're too banged up and it's just not going to happen. So the best you could do is grind out these wins Check weeks off the calendar, add another win there, get to 11 and 1 and see where you're at. If Notre Dame is able to beat Navy and get into this second bye with just the one loss, and then you're looking at a down and out Florida State team at home and whatever else you have going, USC with a terrible loss. I checked in on USC. 
at one point they were winning by two touchdowns. And then I end up on the post game show. People said they lost in the chat. If you could get by Navy next week and get to that second buy, you are you are really looking at the light at the end of the tunnel, that 11-1, and seeing where that puts you. And then we go from there. It would be an amazing comeback from what happened early in the year. My only complaint then would be you need to make it so you don't need to come back from anything. So it's just all plus side and nothing on the negative, right? Like it would be a great comeback from losing to Northern week two, but you know what's better than that? Not needing to come back by losing to Northern week two. So that's what the stakes are. But for tonight, enjoy this win, Notre Dame people. You got to win. It wasn't particularly close. Um, you did a lot of good things. I don't know what's it must have been the special teams day to have everything happen. You had you had some some muffs. You got the the young guy uh, Bryce with uh, young blocking it. You got end around uh, twirly dur- d- double end around twirly a uh, spin a rooney this and that to love and that worked. And then you had the other fake and then must have been a special day a special teams kind of kind of day. And uh, I'm here for it. Can't get enough unfiltered Notre Dame football talk? Be sure to go over to patreon.com slash always Irish. Former captain Mike Goolsby and myself. Do that. Screw it. Oh, we never won anything. It's been 30 years. I'm here for it. So listen, you guys. Enjoy the win, Notre Dame people. Like, I'm not saying the team's perfect. I'm not saying that they can match up and beat Texas right now or Georgia or anything. I'm not saying that. But for where this team is at this year, they're doing as good as you could hope. Winning their games. They're doing as good as you could possibly hope as a Notre Dame fan after week two. Find ways to win the rest of these games. Now, a couple things. Number one is, It is frustrating how Notre Dame's defense seems to give up a touchdown drive like early in the game to almost everybody we play. You get all frustrated, and then they almost don't give up anything else to rest the game. I know you gave up one late. You didn't want to. Um, But good job by Notre Dame tightening it up again after they play so vanilla to like gauge what the other team's going to do, and they're not aggressive at all. Let the team go down the field, and then they tighten it all up. So... Good job by them again. Uh, That's a winning effort again. You got a lot of uh, banged up guys, and that means you have younger guys in there making plays. That means you have depth guys in there, and they're making plays. Good job there. Good job there. Now, if we're going to talk about this defense, let's go over something real quick. Let's go over this. 64 yards rushing for Georgia Tech. Um, now, keep in mind that quarterback's out, the, the good dual threat guy, whatever. 64 yards is, that's a really, really good day against the run. Now, here's what I want to ask. And you could tell me if you, I, I don't know, I'm just asking the question. 269 yards passing, just the one TD, but 269. Is that like, is that... <laughs> Is that like a little bit much to you? And you feel like uh, if Morrison was back there, I don't think it'd be 269. And a few times I saw some guys get open with not a lot of Notre Dame guys around them. And I usually don't see that happen. Is that the Morrison absence effect? I don't know. Um, I don't know. But it's a question I have when I see that 269 passing. Uh, And there were a couple interceptions. Good job there, obviously. Um, you know, with the interception. So I'm just asking if you felt like maybe they're, they were able to pass a little bit more because Morrison wasn't there. Like, I don't know. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Drake Bowen, really, really good job, man. He's turning into a rock solid player. He's going to be a future captain on this team. You could book it. He's turning into a rock solid player. Uh, I love what Osbury was doing. Leonard Moore out there with seven tackles. And one tackle for a loss. Young Leonard Moore, you'd be talked about who's going to step up with Morrison gone. Great job. Osbury on the stat sheet with five tackles. You love to see that. Schuler on there with the in KVA, Schuler with the interception, all this stuff. It's good to see, man. Bryce Young, he's going to be a monster. He's blo- He's making game changing plays already, blocking kicks. Good job. So Al Golden, man, I don't know. 
you start out rough and then you tighten it up and you did it again. And uh, good job there. Here's the thing about um, here's the thing about the Notre Dame offense. You ran the ball for 168 yards. Um, Riley Leonard, 20 of 29, 203, you know, the bad interception. And then after that, he, he got a lot better. Tell me if I'm wrong in this perception, but it felt like to me, it felt like to me in this ball game, Notre Dame was doing a better job of trying to get the ball on short and intermediate routes to their athletes and then letting the athletes make some moves after that. And I felt like I saw more of that in this game than I'm used to seeing. And I've been advocating for more of it. Or maybe Riley Leonard's just doing a better job of distributing the ball where it needs to be to make that happen or whatever. But I just feel like they're doing a better job in this game of getting the ball to these guys and intermediate short stuff. And then, and then they make moves afterwards. Too many of Notre Dame's pass plays this year, like to a guy standing in one spot, they throw it to him and he's tackled or he's at the sideline and he's out of bounds and he runs and he turns around and there's the ball and that's the play. This game, I felt like there was a lot more like leading passes to where the guys could catch it and go do something with it or catch it with space in front of them and juke guys. I felt that. Um, And overall, listen, man. This offense is, this year's offense is never going to be what I want. It's nowhere near championship level off. Like, it's not what I want. And it was never going to be just because the offensive line, no matter what. But I will say this. For all the struggles, you know what they are. The new wide receiver situation, trying to figure that out. Riley Leonard missing camp and all that trying to get up to speed the o-lines all beat up and you got all these guys banged up and then you got denbrock trying to put it all together and make it all work man that's a lot of moving parts i feel like overall the offense does feel like it's progressing a little bit i do feel like they're it it's not smooth, but it looks like a, there's a little more like flow to what they're doing, or it doesn't look as choppy as it did earlier in the year. It's not great. It's not perfect. So slow down yelling at me for saying this. But I do feel like Riley Leonard's getting more. I know the interception was bad, but the last few games and then outside of this interception, his numbers have been really, really good. 70 plus percent completion percentage last three games, six touchdowns, no interceptions coming into this one. Overall, I feel like that's trending in a better direction. Also with Riley Leonard, I feel like he's feeling more confident running this offense. Like just his body language tells me he's gaining confidence running this offense with more of the RPO stuff, dropping back and then making a read. Nobody's open, pulling it and going. I just see more confidence and ease with him trying to get in and out of these plays and in this offense. So that's a good sign. That is a really, really good sign. Um, And so, listen, Notre Dame just needs to keep winning. And you just need to keep knocking weeks off the calendar with these wins And just scratch and claw and get them any way you could get them. Get these wins. That's the best you could do. That's all Notre Dame could do to put themselves in position here. Um, So good relaxing win for Notre Dame. Like, I get it. I had people in my chat saying, why are you all that excited over the mid team we beat or whatever? Dude, it's better than losing to those teams. Like, that's why I'm excited. Because I didn't do a call-in post-game show of the whole year. It's of this game. And Notre Dame did good. Beat this team. Tough road trip. It wasn't particularly close. It's okay to enjoy that. It's okay to enjoy that. And Notre Dame's very much alive in the playoff hunt. I don't know what you think they could do or not if they make it. But they're very much in the hunt. And you just got to keep winning. Couple more notes. The blue on white uniforms, I don't really care. Just keep win, keep winning. Like, I'm telling you what it felt like to me. It almost felt to me like a Shamrock Series game. Like, there was a lot of people cheering when Notre Dame did good stuff. Like, 
I didn't buy, I didn't mind this at all. So if you want to be stupid as the away team and take a, a game out of your building on your campus and move it to a neutral or whatever, I'm fine with that. I think that helped Notre Dame. Um, but those blue on white uniform, I don't care. Just win. They wanted to wear white, you wear blue. So it was an opportunity to wear the a, a different combo. Whatever, I don't care. Win your games. The only thing I'm going to say is, don't turn this into an Oregon thing because you're not Oregon. You have that gold and the blue and gold. And even your green is like throwback enough. Like just stick with your basics because it's one of the classiest uniforms in the whole world. Just don't get too funky with it. You don't need to. You have a classic. You don't need to mess the classic. It's like the Dodgers. It's like the Yankees. It's like Notre Dame. You don't mess with these logos and these things. You don't have to. They're iconic alone. That's why I was so offended when Notre Dame did the pinstripes, Yankee. It's like, dude, you're ruining two of these brands when you did that. So I don't care about the uniforms. Just don't go crazy with them. Um, here's the other thing. ESPN kept hammering. It's not an... Jesus. In case anybody didn't realize it, did you know that Notre Dame's not in a conference? ESPN told you that 74 times. The producer in these guys' ear said, oh, no, Notre Dame's here. We got it. We have no talking points because they're not in the Big Ten or the SEC. Better hammer this. They went on the old game about Notre Dame needs style points. It's not going to be enough to just go 11-1. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I'll ask this. Is it a scenario where 11 and one gets Notre Dame in the field? And if they're, they blow teams out that could position them in a hosting seed five through eight. Could that be the dynamic? Here's the other thing it makes me think about. When you look at what Notre Dame has left, you have two brand names that are in the crapper, Florida state and USC. You have two academies on the rise and then you have Virginia in there. Is there anything Notre Dame could do? Again? Is blowing out any of those teams really going to move the needle? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if it matters or not. Like my priority is 11 and one before I worry about it. Pretty points. My priority is 11 and one and, and getting in that playoff. And then we'll deal with whatever happens when it happens. But that's your goal right now is checking off each week with the W by it and moving on. And if that offense continues to find itself a little bit, great. Some of the younger role players and the backups playing for the injured guys it come along more, great. Like, I do feel like Notre Dame's trending up a little bit, even in spite of the injuries. I feel that. I don't feel stagnation. That offense feels to me like it's moving forward a little bit. That gives me hope that it's not just stagnation and you're hanging on, but that you're progressing a little bit. You're growing a little bit. I like that. So the bottom line is Notre Dame's a flawed team. They are a very beat up team, but they're playing winning football right now. They've won a handful in a row since their nightmare. You have one more tricky game to win before this, this bye. And then you get real serious about a real playoff run and 11 one being a real possibility. If you could get by this Navy team. So I expect a lot of stress leading into Navy and a lot of talk about, how you got to defend Navy and they shorten the game and all this stuff and they throw it this year. We'll get into it. We have all week to get into it. But for now, in this weekend, enjoy this win, Notre Dame people. I had all the negativity in my chat. Real negativity is losing to Northern at home and it makes you hate your life, hate football, hate sports, hate your family, hate your job. Hate everything when Notre Dame loses. It's okay to be happy when they win a game like this. This was a, a must-have game, and it wasn't that close, and Notre Dame took care of business. Good job. We'll talk to you all on the morning show Monday. Don't forget to check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. You can browse and carouse all the different Always Irish gear. Make sure you head over there and get something for the next tailgate. Thanks for being here.